Hi, this is Brian Ives from K&J Scraping in Milford, Michigan. Uh, what we're going to show you is a little instructional video on scraping. Uh, the first thing I'd like to do is show you the stuff, that the equipment that you're going to need to scrape. Uh, down here to my right, uh, the first thing you're going to need is obviously the scraper. Uh, I use a hand scraper. It's from Anderson Brothers in Rockford, Illinois. Got a piece of high-speed steel with carbide brazed on it. Um, the other thing you need is a stone because after you get done scraping, you've got to stone your area. Um, you, you need a brush because once you get done scraping, you cause chips, you brush off the chips. You'll then stone it. We use a little bit of mineral spirits on there. After we get done doing that, then we, we put on a color here, an orange color. We put the black on our straight edge or on our surface plate to get our rubs. That way we know what we've got to cut. As I was talking, uh, the equipment you need. You need several things to do a good scrape job. First of all, you need some straight edges. Back here, we have every different size because the, the size of the job is the size of the straight edge you have to use. Too many people use the wrong equipment for the wrong job. Uh, we've got an 8 foot straight edge, a 6 foot straight edge, a 5 foot, a 4 foot, a 3 foot, and a foot and a half. Uh, we've got a straight edge for any size job you have. This is our bigger plate. It's a 4 by 10 stair plate, um, grade A. Uh, it's, it's a great plate for it. It does an outstanding job. And once again, you need the size plate for the size job. Over here on this plate, now we have another smaller plate. Once again, we have a crane under every plate so that we can keep our, keep our staff going. Uh, this plate, I've just got some parts for a high-speed uh, Toyota spindle sitting on here. Like that. This is a 3x4 plate. And once again, same size plate for the same size job. Over here, I have a variety of plates. I've got four different plates here, too. Uh, for whatever size job we need. You need the right equipment for the right job. Here's one of the last things we need is uh, the all the equipment we need to check stuff. Really the art of scraping is checking. Uh, you've got to be able to check whether you're doing a mill, an OD grinder, a surface grinder, a shaper. It makes no difference. You have to be able to check it. Uh, some of the stuff we have in here, we have precision levels. Uh, I've got four V blocks over here. I've got a set of four V blocks. I've got a 60 degree V block, sign plates, um, three sets of Joe blocks. I've got turkite back here. I do. I can also put on turkite, um, a rule on any type of that material. Down here we've got eight different blocks the same size, all kinds of checking arbors, whether we've got a Morris taper, a Jarno taper, we've got a checking arbor for it. Uh, parallel cylinder squares. Uh, eight blocks that are ground the same size. I've got a 30 degree and 60 degree uh, block over there for doing an angle head on a grinder. Um, you need all that equipment in order to take your proper checks. Checking of the machine is the key to a good scrape job. Uh, it's not just scraping. Scraping you'll learn quickly, but being able to check and know the tolerances of the machine is what makes a successful scrape job. Okay, now the, the thing we want to do before we get started is we give it a fresh cross scrape. Uh, that's the first scrape on any job is what we have. So what, all we're doing is we're taking a sample piece here so we can show you how to scrape. And we're just going to cross scrape this angle plate up. And then we're going to take a few rubs, get some bearing cuts on it, and then we'll give it a flake job so you can understand everything we've got to do. So as you can see, you cross scrape. When you're cross scraping, you try and be as uniform as you can. Uh, you try to look to cover about 80% of the area. You're not looking to cover all 100% because you want to have some bearing surface left uh, when you're done. All right, let me finish that up and then we'll show you what's next. Okay, now we've completed the cross scrape process. And once again, like I said, we give it a scrape about 80% of the way. Uh, after we get done doing that, we brush the chips off, make sure we're good that way. Now something I've learned, I've been doing this about 30 years, something I've learned is we put a little bit of mineral spirits on here. That helps the stone to cut and it also cleans your stone. What you're looking to stone is as your scraper stopped, it makes a burr. So you're literally taking off the burrs. When you stone, you try and stone as even as possible. Like that. You try and go back and forth against the thing. Don't stay in one spot and stone. You try and stone nice and evenly. That helps you because you can literally stone a hole in it. That's how fussy this gets. After you stone it, you feel like it's stoned very thoroughly, you're good that way, you'll stop. Then what you take and do is you wipe your mineral spirits off like that because you don't want that on there anymore because that'll make your, your rub a little bit too greasy. After you get that mineral spirits off there, now you add your orange color. 
And what this does, this does several things. One is it shows you better where your black spots are. Two, it takes the cast iron dust off of it, like that. So that helps you to clean it off. All right, once again, you put this on nice and evenly. Okay, you get that. Once you're done there, you take it, you're gonna wipe it by hand. That's what you always wanna do. We're gonna take an air hose here in a second and blow out these holes. Make sure there's no dirt. When we flip it over to rub it on the plate, we have to make for sure that there's no dirt in there. Okay, now we've unclamped it. We've set it down on our bench. I blew the holes out. I've cleaned it all off. I'm about to rub it on the plate. <clears throat> For demonstration purposes, I'm just gonna use this plate. Normally, I would get a plate that was more the size of this area. But what we're gonna do is we're gonna take it off. We'll take, and we black this up already over here. We're gonna set it down and get a rub. You try to be as careful as you can so that you don't knock any chips off or anything like that. You want it to be nice and clean under there. Now what you do is, two things you want to do, when you're, when you're taking a rub here, you can never take a rub and have it come off the edge of the plate. Like if I was to rub this and it comes off, that's really a false rub there. That's not a good rub like that. We want to always make sure that we keep it on the plate, that our job will always stay on the surface plate, or our surface plate, if we're rubbing it, is bigger than our job. These are things you've got to look for. You can really get into trouble if you have the wrong size equipment for the job. Okay, as you can see on the rub here is what we've got, it's real high on both ends. It's high out here and high from that. And that's probably because it's an angle bracket and we've used it a lot on clamping surfaces to hold stuff down. Uh, so that's what we've got. We'll go ahead and give this a couple of cuts and show you what it's like to cut that. When you're cutting it now, all you want to do is you want to cut your black spots. That's all you're looking to do. So we're going to come out here and cut accordingly. Now we'll come back here, cut our black spots. All right, I'm gonna move to, to uh, cross my cut. When you're cutting, every time you cut, you go a different direction. If you continue to go the same direction, you get what's known as chatter. Uh, then your rub is a little bit different and your bearing won't come in right. So you've gotta always cross your cuts when you're doing it. You cut one way and cut another way. Sometimes it's hard when you're doing spindles. Uh, we'll do spindles, we'll do workhead spindles, we'll do double disc grinder spindles here, and it gets hard to always cross your cuts, but you still gotta try and do that. And we've, over the years, we've developed ways to do that. Okay, so we repeated the process. Once again, we cut it, uh, we stoned it, we redded it, um, or put the orange on, excuse me, and then we rubbed it on uh, the surface plate there and got a rub. As you can see, it moved out a little bit. It moves, and that's when it'll gradually start moving out. Um, I probably will we'll cut it, and then we'll get it to hit fairly good, and then we'll show you what we've got when we have a finished cut. Right now, when you're taking this kind of cut, you lean on it pretty good. You'll see the smoke coming off of my uh, scraper like that, and that's just from pushing hard on it. Um, Sometimes, obviously, you've got to do that in order for it to move. Once again, we'll cross our cuts. Don't be afraid to go around the bench too. Sometimes to cut from one side or the other, it makes it much easier. 
Uh, hitting an edge, you don't want to slip off. That'll smack your knuckle butt good. Okay, so that now we finished another cut. Once again, we're just cutting where the black spots are. Now you take your brush, brush off your chips, keep it as clean as you can, and obviously where our scraper stopped, we made a burr. Now we've got to go back and restone everything. Once again, I add a little bit of mineral spirits, keep things clean. Now when I stone, I try to stone just where I cut. off that and then once we get it we put the orange on so that we're getting ready put the orange on here and we'll get ready and take another rub you repeat this process until you have black spots everywhere once you have black spots everywhere then what you what is this, you know is that your plate is flat now this is hitting the same as that so now that makes it flat all right Okay, as you can see now, we've, we've worked on it a little, way, little bit, and we've got it hitting fairly good. Uh, we're going to give this a finished cut, and then we'll show you what it, it looks like after that, and then we're going to flake it. Uh, now, the reason you flake it is for the oil pattern and the design. Uh, we'll show you a little bit of that. When you finish cut, uh, what I always try to do is my last two cuts, I try to go the same direction. Now, you, we try to make a little bit of a curly cue. You develop this over years of doing it. It's hard to do right out, of, right out of the gate, but it's not that critical. The, the main thing that is critical is that you get it to hit good. That we're, all, you know, we're doing a good job that way. That your bearing is good. Once again, there's several things that can make it hit good. Is one uh, how well you stone it, what kind of stone you're using. Um, make sure your carbide sharpened with the right wheel so you can take the proper cut. Uh, little things like that that really will help you. Obviously here at k and we've been doing it 30 years where we've got an idea of what's happening. Also, if you have any, any questions or anything like that, you can always give us a call here. We, uh, we give classes. We can scrape anything. We've, been, we've done boring mills, surface grinders, bridge ports, all kinds of stuff. You see, there's no smoke coming out of my scraper now. What we're looking to do here is we're just looking to get your black spots. And you're looking to cut them in half. You're not going to cut it where there's absolutely no black spots. You're going to take and cut them in half there and see what you have. Now here's what your finished product looks like on a hand scrape job. Now, now what we've done is we've just scraped this. Now if we were uh, doing a table, this is the way we would leave it. Um, right After we get done here, I'm going to put some red on here, or orange on here, and I'm going to flake it. But that's what I, your curly cues go that way. Um, my surface plate here is scraped by hand. Any cast iron thing like that. We can get real precise. Uh, when you're doing it with a hand scrape job, if you've got an end that was up like earlier, then you cut just that end. Or if you're machining it or grinding it, they've got to grind the whole thing like that. But that's what you're looking for. That's a hand scrape job you're looking at. Okay, now what we're doing is we're putting a finishing touch on. Now we do this always on a base or something like that, but we're going to show it to you on the, on the uh, angle plate here. We're flaking the job. Never do you flake both pieces when you put them together. We just don't like to do that. It gives a little bit too much area for dirt to get in. However, you like to flake one of them and scrape the other one. Uh, it gives you more bearing, more places for your oil to go like that. So you never get like what you get when you get two Joe blocks sticking together. You never get that effect. All right, I'm going to show you how you flake. You flake it in rows, and then you turn around and come the other way. Um, you flake it, and you try and keep it in a nice straight line when you're doing it. 
just nice solid rolls is what you're looking for. It is always hard to get right up against an edge. You're trying to hold it out a little bit on the side to get it up against that edge. You gotta apply apply nice even pressure going all the way across and keep it at the same speed. That gives you a nice uniform look. Okay, now we're gonna put on our second row here. All right, once again, I put this on, and I only put the, the orange on so that I can see my rows better a little bit when I'm flaking uh, like that. It's not a, you wouldn't have to do this. I know a lot of guys that scrape that don't do it now, but that's just something I've got into the habit of doing. Once again, I don't know if I really went over, this is a Biax scraper. Uh, like our bikes flaker, excuse me, not a scraper. They have scrapers too, but I prefer to hand scrape over the power scrapers. I've used them and I can use them, but I like the hand scrape a little bit better. It's a little bit easier on my wrist. But the power flaker, there's just no beating it. I can pound them in and I can push them by hand, but this just makes it more consistent and a little deeper. So we'll put the second coat on and then we'll clean it all up and we'll show you what a finished product looks like. Now, once again, you're all done with your flake job, but it's the flake, much like the scraper, what causes a burst, so you've got to go back and stone the whole thing. So, once again, we get our little mineral spirits on here a little bit just to touch it. And once again, because it's finished, now you want to try and stone as even as you can. Clean that off, and that's a little bit of what your finished product looks like here. Try and clean that up for you a little bit and show you what you have. What you're looking at now is a fresh scrape job with a fresh flake job on there. As you can see, you stand back and look at it, it looks very uniform. Uh, and that's what you try to do, like that. There you go. Okay, that, that was a quick uh, instructional video on scraping here at K&J. Uh, I'd like to reiterate, anything you, you need scraped or anything you need done, obviously we could do it here. Whether you want a class to learn how to scrape, whether you want it scraped, um, whether you want some instruction, just you can give me a call. Uh, my number is 248-467-9828. That's K&J Scraping in Milford, Michigan. 
My email address is kjscraping, S-C-R-A-P-I-N-G, at yahoo.com. Uh, contact me anytime. If there's anything I can ever do to help, feel free to give a call. Thank you.